Look at the neckline of this garment. It's got a crossover and a bit of binding that holds it together. But don't think this is the front because this is the back and this is a style I've never sewn before. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. Today we are hopping back into a mini capsule series that I'm running on the channel. I've shared my plans the other day with you. It's only a five garment collection so it's not too overwhelming. I've chosen my colors, my patterns. I will leave a playlist for you down below so you can hop on there and catch up. I have already sewn the first garment which was a cami tank with a shelf bra. It has a little trick in there that doesn't bounce and now I'm on to my second garment which is the Elevate Overlay from Green Style Creations. This is a really multifunctional style it just depends on how you make it and what fabric to use it doesn't really need to be active wear if you don't really want it to be and this pattern has two patterns in one. I've only focused on the overlay this time but there also is a crop top. This crop top is not an actual bra you would need to wear a bra underneath. I don't know if I'll make a crop top someday but it is a really cute pattern. Got a higher neckline, a lower a neckline at the back you can have a u back or a racer back there is a standard bust and a full bust option the full bust option has a little bit of gathers on the side that gives you a bit more space for the bust and the cutest feature is a band that overlaps on the front i put that pattern aside for this opportunity and just made the overlay that was what i was interested in and the overlay has a lot of options also really beginner friendly there are only a few pattern pieces here what's different about this one and it's a garment type i've never made before is that that the crossover detail is at the back it's not at the front you can hem it two ways you can just sew your side seams and have the top all open hem it and then just tie it up at the back and that's how you wear it or you can cross over the back there are little notches there and just base it along the bottom and then sew on a hem band that is the option I've chosen you can put sleeves or not there is a round neckline and at the back right there where you have the crossover you can sew a little bit of binding and prevent the back from opening if you're moving and the garment falling off and things like that to add even more options to this great pattern, Green Style has created a free add-on that you can download with a hood piece if you wanted to add that on. Maybe you're planning to make this for cooler weather and you want to make it in a sweater knee or something cozy. I think the hood would be a great addition. You get the pattern pieces and the instructions for that for free. If you want to make the crop top, your fabric needs to stretch a little more than what you need for the overlay. They are totally different patterns and therefore need different types of fabrics. So 75% stretch is what you would need for the crop top. Athletic knits would be best. And for the overlay, you only need 50% stretch. It could be horizontal and vertical but if your fabric only stretches horizontally I think you would be okay it is a design that has a nice roomy fit I think light to medium weight fabrics work best you do need a bit of spandex in there and you can make this with athletic knits sweater knits rib knits you can use rayon spandex if you want to modal spandex bamboo spandex I'm thinking what I wouldn't use for this a pretty heavyweight knits like Ponty Roma it's really stiff it would look pretty terrible I think so you need something that has a nice drape because I want this for active wear. I want to sweat in this. I want to work out in this. I've chosen a light to medium weight athletic knit. So it's wicking and all those things. I could get wet in this and it would dry really quickly. That is my goal. But if I wanted to make one for not active wear, I think I would have chosen a really nice sweater knit. You know, there's a lot of options here for you to choose from. If you've been following along this mini series where I'm making five garments for my perfect fit capsule, you know it's a challenge from Green Style Creations. They are running a sale for all the patterns and that runs through the 12th of March. That is the date when this challenge finishes. So I'll leave you linked below in the description, the blog post that you can go where you'll find the coupon code to get any pattern you want for 25% off. And maybe if you like the Elevate overlay, you can get it too. These links will be affiliate links. I do make a little commission if you buy through there and it doesn't cost you anything extra. It's one way that you can support the work that I do here without it costing you anything because you still get your pattern. You also find the link for the free add-on that is the hood that you can add on if you want to make yourself a cozy Elevate overlay. Has the full size range from B to M and that will go up to a 62 inch hip. For the crop top you have a standard bust option so if you measure your high bust and your full bust and you have a difference up to four inches you could use the regular bust option but if it's more four five six inches meaning you have a larger sewing cup size you can use the full bust option for the overlay you just get one pattern there's no bust options here i just chose my size according to my measurements 
which is an H here up the top, blending to an I at the hips. The ease that turned out is just what I wanted. I wouldn't want more ease or less ease than what turned out to be. I chose the option with a hemband, so I knew that was gonna bring it in a little bit, and I was really pleased that the hemband doesn't actually hug the hips. You know, I do still have a little bit of ease there, which is something I always like. About the sewing, a few things here. I'm using a stretch needle number 90. I actually ran out of number 80s, but I think the number 90 is okay because my fabric, even though it's lightweight, it's not too lightweight either, so I think that would be fine. My fabric was virtually the same on the right side and the wrong side. I put it against natural lighting. I really concentrated to see what was the difference and I could not. So I made sure that when I was cutting out the fabric, I was making little chalk line marks on every single piece so that I know that that is the wrong side of the fabric. If you don't do that sometimes, you might think, well, it's the same, it doesn't matter, but it, there might be a subtle difference when you're outside and your pieces could end up looking a little different. Also, if you're sewing on sleeves, you might end up having sleeves put in the wrong way, on the wrong armhole. Make sure you think about that if you have fabrics that are the same on both sides. Seam allowance here is 3 eighths of an inch. I have sewn it partially on the serger, partially on the sewing machine. And in this opportunity, I have general construction for you, but I've mainly focused on how to sew the binding onto this neckline. A little different i really like the technique and i think if you're newer to sewing who might think oh that binding i'm not good at that it's never turned out right i really need a little bit more assistance with that so that is what i'm doing for you today have a look at it and see how to really really get a nice result let's hop into up close and so personal the segment that shows you all the nitty-gritty There's only a few pattern pieces for the Elevate overlay. This is the back. Those are two pieces. The front is simple, just cut on the fold. It's got a type of a scoop neck. It's not too low either. And this piece is the hem band. The hem band is optional. You can also just hem the whole top, leave it all open and just tie it up at the back, which is an option. Super easy also. And then all that you see there are the binding for the neckline, for the armholes and a little piece of binding that is going to go across like this just to keep this from not falling off basically at the back what i have on the table first is the front touching the cutting mat and then on top i put my two back pieces i line them at the shoulders and you see they overlap here at the back that's where the crossover is going to be so the first step is to sew the shoulder seams because I'm making this sleeveless, I'm not going to bother with stabilizing them or anything like that because there's going to be no weight on them. But if I was making the version with the sleeves, I would definitely put some ribbon or clear elastic or something into this seam. Not in this case though, and I'm so happy I have matching serger thread. Love that. Okay, so I've sewn the shoulder seams. Now I have pinned my side seams and I'll sew those. Now we're just quickly sewing these side seams. These are all pretty straight seams very simple construction so if you're newer to sewing you could definitely do this the only thing that will take a little while longer is doing the binding but i'll show you how what we see here are the binding pieces for the neckline now this short one will go on the front and then these two long ones will go on the back and they will be sewn together it is an extremely long band there was no way you could cut it all continuously anyway so basically you're going to have this short piece and then a long piece that way and a long piece that way and the seam that you'll get there is going to match the shoulder seams so you're going to have basically Basically one long piece, a short piece and a long piece and that will make up for the binding. I don't want to serge these little seams because they would, they'd be extremely bulky. If I just straight stitch them I can press them open and then it will be flat and less bulky. We'll just go ahead and sew these pieces together. I'm gonna just use a straight stitch 3 8 seam allowance. After sewing the binding together we have one long piece. There are the seams. I've pressed them open. Now I decided to serge one of the long ends just to finish it inside because if you don't do anything it will be a raw edge inside which is fine it won't unravel but it really disturbs me so I just serged the long end. This front binding is the short bit that is in the middle. I have put a pin in the center to match the center of the neckline over there. And now I have my garment here. I have it with the fabric right sides up. I know it's blue, it's hard to see. But I'll draw a little line here where the shoulder seam is right there. This is the front neckline. This is the center front right there, the fold. You can see it's a rounded neckline. And then all of this diagonal thing is the back that is going to cross over. The fabric is right sides up here. And all we're going to do with our binding is place it right sides together. So this is the right side of the binding against the right side of the top. 
we'll just pin the center front and now I want to pin the seam of the binding that you can see open there against the shoulder seam here now the binding is shorter in this area of course because you don't want your front neckline to gape when we sew this we'll have to stretch the binding a little to match the length of the neckline and then we go ahead and pin the other side find your seam pin it right there at the shoulder seam make sure the seam allowances of your shoulders are going towards the back I am pretty obsessive about that actually <laughs> Look, if I take this point from the bottom and match it up to the seam and divide this in half, I'm gonna have a good reference point as to where this is straight from here down and where this is slightly curved. Now I'll show you what happens with the binding over the, on this side. I'll just show you on one side because it's the same on the other. I'm gonna start pinning from the bottom here. Just because this upper area is a little bit curved, I want this area to have the section that has a shorter binding. But from here down, it's pretty straight. The binding can be just pinned one to one. That means that you're pinning the binding normal without stretching it right up to that pin there. Okay, so from the bottom of the crossover up to that half point that I marked with a pin, it's pinned one to one. I haven't stretched anything. And then the rest of the binding from this pin up to the shoulder seam is a little bit shorter than the neckline there and that's going to ensure that your crossover is not going to gape on the upper part of your back so this area will be stretched slightly to match the neckline i'll do the same on the other side so the binding is being sewn onto the neckline with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance a shallow zigzag to allow stretch and on this first section you see that i'm just sewing normal the pins are there the binding is one to one up to a certain point of the back neckline. Here is the horizontal pin that marks up to this section where the binding is sewn one to one. That means it's just the same length. Here is the shoulder seam and from here you can see that the binding is slightly shorter and I'll just stretch slightly to match while I sew this part on. Always making sure that you are aligning the raw edges really neatly. Make sure you're only tugging on the binding gently, not the neckline underneath. Now we are at the section of the front neckline. It's quite curved. I decided to divide the front neckline in four instead of just put the center front pin because it's quite curved and I thought doing this more accurately was gonna help me stretch it out more evenly and get a nicer result. That's why you see a pin there and a pin there. This is actually the center front. So I'll just be stretching slightly and trying to keep the raw edges together because this is quite curved here. Now we are starting to sew the other back section that's the same as the one that we've sewn. We have the first section where I'll be stretching the binding. And then I have the section here that is just normal one-to-one. -one. You might think, you know, why, why so many little details here stretch from here to there? But it is really important because you do want that neckline to come close to your chest in the front and close to your upper back you don't want anything gaping so this is important so this method of binding is not going to make you lose the height of your neckline or your armhole it's going to stay the same what we do now is take the binding and just wrap it around that seam allowance like that and you can see the seam allowance is right in there that's how the binding is going to look it's going to be super neat and towards the inside of the garment you have the binding coming inside now if i hadn't have searched this this would be completely raw which is fine, I mean it's not going to unravel, it just looks really ugly and I can't wear items with raw edges inside, I just cannot do it. So I'm just going to take my time and fold it all in, pin it nicely and then I'm still thinking what method I'm going to use to top stitch. You know if you use a regular zigzag, you know you can, it just looks really ugly in my opinion. You could use a shallow zigzag and then it would look like you're just edge stitching or you could use a twin needle, if you have a cover stitch you could do that got the top of my lap just relaxed doing some hand basting you can see that the binding wraps over to the inside and I'm hand basting it away from the edge right there just to make sure I'm catching everything you can see I don't want to not catch this that's why I wouldn't trust the pins if I just wanted to pin and sew I, I want to make sure that all the binding is going to get caught in the seam I know that the hand basting is going to keep it secure so I'm just taking my time wrapping the binding around putting the needle in making sure I'm catching it on the other side and that's it you know this can be really relaxing if you want it to be and if you're not in a hurry I mean why not that is what I'm doing right now on the neckline and I'll do the same process for the armholes as well I decided I'm going to use a twin needle to top stitch this now this looks like it's got a lot of packets and everything but don't worry after this is sewn and we give it a, li a little bit of steam 
this will turn out smooth and perfect and the armhole won't gape and open. This is how this looks. I think it looks pretty. A twin needle is going to allow stretch because it forms a type of zigzag under there. And I'm really happy with the look there. This is how I'm going to finish everything, the other armhole and the neckline. I've got it all hand basted. Now after we've done all that, you know, after this part of the binding is sewn, we can do the overlap on the back. So just crisscross it whichever way, it doesn't really matter. And here close to the side seam you'll see a mark and that's where this is supposed to reach. And the same over there, you can see the mark and there. So I'm just going to give this a hand based at the bottom so that this can just act as one piece. And then this is where you would attach your hemband at the end. Now over here, I'm going to need some help because I'm going to try this on after the whole top is done. I'm going to put this little binding that will just hold this in place on the top and not so it doesn't really open up completely and fall off my shoulders. So that's something I can't determine now. I need to have it on the body to see. But I'm just going to make a little binding piece, nothing special, and just sew it down there, sew it down there. My perfect fit capsule is revolving around blue and navy and some prints. I have some solids and this is one of the solid garments I've chosen to make. So nice. <laughs> I really love it. Look, this scoop neckline is not too low. It's not too high. You know, it's not plunging. It's not up here at your clavicles either. It's, it's like that. It's really nice, rounded. And then this is the same armhole you would use if you were just putting on a sleeve. Now for my regular life, like if I wanna go out, I probably would prefer to have this a little narrower so that it reaches my shoulder. But when I'm working out at the gym, I do appreciate a little bit more cover right here. I'm still fresh because my arms are still out if I'm sweating and things, but I do like tops with a little bit more cover for the gym. So the way you saw me sew the binding is the same way I finished the armhole right there. Let me show you the binding up close. You know, the hand basting always works a treat. I always love doing that. Never regret it because it just turns out so nice. That means I end up catching everything that's at the back and I don't have a piece of binding that I didn't catch. The fabric is a little bit slippery, so the pins would not have done a nice job. You know, you get a little zigzag at the back with the twin needle, so that allows for stretch and you're not gonna have popping threads and things like that. Another thing, make sure you're sewing with polyester thread. Cotton thread doesn't really work for these types of fabrics. You know, you might get skipped stitches and later down the line, it's not a strong thread. You might get popped stitches or things coming out in the wash. Sewing this little bit here is something that when I was editing the footage, I realized I didn't have. <laughs> it's just a binding piece. I did serge one of the long ends and I just folded it in three. So you get your binding, you fold the raw end in and then the serged edge over it. And then I just gave it a top stitch with a twin needle, the same as everywhere else. And that's how I had a nice sturdy binding. <laughs> I pinned it where I thought it could be on both sides, made sure to measure, <laughs> made sure to measure from the shoulder seam down to there. I think it turned out to be about four inches. So it's the same on both sides, pinned it there, tried it on. I made the binding extra long. At first, my binding length was too long. It was just doing nothing for me. I asked my son to give me a hand to pin the other side closer together and I just kept looking to see until I got the perfect length. I don't think there could be a standard length for everyone. Everyone's going to want it different. So that is how mine turned out. And then I used my twin needle to just sew it down there, sew it down there, it's sort of disguised in the seam that we already had from the binding. That was like the last thing I did after the garment was all, all sewn up. And at the bottom we have a hemband. This hemband has side seams, so there were two pieces. I prefer that. I prefer that to when you have a hemband that's just one piece and one seam and then you don't know where to put it. I find it not balanced if you just have one seam on the side and one on the center back doesn't look very nice. I prefer two seams for sure. That's how this pattern is. And then we have the crossover. The crossover on the back is a lot, like it almost reaches the side. It's maybe about two inches away from the side. So there is a lot of fabric crossing over there. It's not like you're gonna be showing your whole back, like this is gonna collapse and show everything, it's not. And when I was taking my pictures and filming the footage to show you, I put on a sports bra and maybe you can see this much of my back underneath my sports bra only sometimes. 
and I don't mind, it's fresh, you get air down there and if you're working out, it's all welcome. And I don't have a sports bra that's really cute, that's gonna have a nice print that I can show off yet, but I will. <laughs> So for now, I've just paired it with one of my boring, boring black ready-to-wear sports bras. But when I sew my power sports bra, then I'm going to have a print and this is going to look super fun. So let's see it on just out there under the trees. Here is my Elevate overlay from Green Style. I love the back crossover detail that is different to anything I've ever made. I've chosen the sleeveless version with hemband in a really cool, wicking, fresh athletic knit. There are other options too. You can leave the hem open and tie it up and not put the hemband. And of course you can sew in sleeves. I like that the front neckline is not too low. It's just right. At the back, the short piece of binding from one side to the other helps the back stay in place and not open up. I think there's a good cover on the armholes here. Here's a little look at the binding. Super neat technique. I love sewing it. And this blue top will fill a gap in my wardrobe. This is part of my perfect fit mini capsule. It's only five garments. This is the second one. And I really enjoyed sewing this different for me style with a peep of skin at the back that I'm very comfortable with. You can also make this with other fabrics. It doesn't really need to be for active wear, but I do want mine for working out. love this design and as a person who doesn't like to show off too much skin I think this is just the right amount that I'm very very comfortable with that much of skin is not going to offend anyone at the back right under my sports bra especially if I'm in a gym setting now if I made this in another type of material like a sweater knee or a rib knee and I had it with sleeves and it was going to be a type of layering piece then you would be wearing something underneath right and I can wear my cami also the cami that I've made is navy, it's gonna go perfect with the blue and it'll give you the full back coverage that you need, but it still looks really cute at the back. You know, most garments have design elements that are nice to look at, but they're only in the front. Having a piece that has something totally unexpected at the back, I think is really fun to just think about and then sew and have it in your wardrobe and then wear it. I'm really excited to have this piece. I hope I can make more in the future. You see garments three, four and five pop up on the channel very soon this week. And I'll do a reveal video mixing all of these pieces together, seeing how many looks we can come up with using only five garments. Look out for that one. And meanwhile, if you're newer to sewing and you want an in-depth look at bindings, bands, neck bands, armholes, necklines, all of that, I have a free masterclass here on YouTube that you can check out. It's linked right there. You'll be set to go to sew all the bindings and neck bands and everything you want. See you soon. Bye. Can I